Hello and welcome. So pleased that there are um, a pair of lovely folks live with me tonight to um, share this time with one another. And as is true with every one of the new moon uh, gatherings that I've hosted in the last year, and I know I didn't remember to say to you, say it now, I'm Carol. And uh, this has been a pleasure to offer gatherings as the pandemic directed us certainly last year to do so via Zoom. So I'm Carol Omar Behan, happy to, and I, I see that uh, another person has joined us. Uh, so good to see that this is uh, you coming aboard, Peggy. Just a reminder, if you and anyone else joins in the next few minutes, if you be sure to mute yourself. So those of us gathering here, um, and certainly if you were attracted to come to the video recording, which any number of you watch later on, it is because we're in a rather exciting opportunity with this new moon. We're gathering live on April 19th, 2023. And for those of us in our necks of the woods, and we're all within a relatively, uh, what we're in New England, all of us here, knowing each of you in this call tonight, and the sun is making its way to the horizon, dusk will settle in, and as midnight rolls around for all of us here in the Northeast, not long after midnight, there will be not only a new moon in Aries, but there will be a total solar eclipse. This is part of a pair of eclipses that happens this time of year, and this is the first one, and it is in Aries. So the occasion then, as has been true of these videos now for more than a year, uh, to bring ourselves together in, uh, in a group. Uh, I think of it always as a circle, no matter how far apart we physically are. We are gathered in spirit to celebrate the energies of Grandmother Moon in her cycles coming to new. So here we are, the Aries new moon and the total solar eclipse. Um, before, and there, there's always a quiet and meditative part, which is the conclusion of our time together. So giving a little bit of a background for anybody who sees this for the first time and we have a, a new person on a, uh, the call tonight in terms of tuning in live via Zoom. Um, but I want to let you all know that as um, the inspired, the inspiration to offer these to you in my capacity, knowing something of the cycles of the new moon, doing ceremony around earth energies for quite a while of my life, that I now offer a newsletter to. Um, remind people, let them know when the Zoom gatherings are. In addition to the new moon gatherings, which have been going on now for beyond, they began in January of 2022. So here we are now a full year later and Spirit is certainly saying, see who else would like to be a part of this. And again, we have a group of us live, but there's the larger circle that evolves when people watch and tune in later to the video. So there's a newsletter option now that will be linked at my website that will be in the notes that come below this video. And there's another spirit, spirit brings forward things that uh, are suggested that I might wanna share. And I have a lot of enthusiasm about earth energies and all that is uh, available in this beautiful web of love and light in this beautiful planet. And I have a new series just begun, Earth Wisdom Series. Uh, created a video a few weeks ago on, and we're doing the elemental uh, beings first and around World Water Day in March, I recorded a video in honor of water. Coming up this weekend for us uh, in, well, really all of the world, but it's uh, certainly something I've been a part of for ever since college days. It is Earth Day 2023. And for the celebration of that, I will be recording a video dedicated to Mother Earth, our wonderful Mother Earth. 
So with all of that said, a little bit of background and any questions that you might have further, there's a way to connect with me via the newsletter, which is out now, uh, and my website, Golden Spiral Journey. So again, welcome to everybody. It's an exciting uh, evening that we are uh, tuning in with one another. And again, for those of you who um, are joining us later via video, I want to give you a little bit of a background and, and a tiny bit because oftentimes I get so enthused about any number of things that spirit brings to my attention that people might find of value and of interest. And one of them, before I give you a little bit more background, is that these gatherings, and, and there's so much feminine energy involved with the moon. And I'm, I'm sure every person, man, male or female, largely female and the group, the people who have been drawn to these. And we recognize and I think feel almost instinctively our draw to the moon and our energy. So in putting these out there for the world and offering them for those who feel drawn to tune in and share this energy and time, there are this year some overlighting energies that are supporting us. And one of them is Archangel Sandalphon. Archangel Sandalphon is pictured here uh, in the Oracle deck of Amanda Ellis. So you see his beautiful shape. And I want to read you a little bit. So he is, and I want to um, offer to you and to help us further enhance what we're sharing tonight. Um, I'm going to be using um, a um, oil spray. What was the word I'm missing? Um, uh -huh. I'm, okay, anyway, it's a beautiful spray dedicated to Archangel Michael, Archangel Sandifon. Archangel Michael is often aboard too. So I'm going to offer a little of Sandifon spray to enjoy and allow yourself to receive this beautiful energy. So Sandifon has been behind and around and supporting, blessing the energies that have helped this work to go forward and your time tonight with one another uh, and whenever it is that you join our circle because the circle is a timeless gathering each of the months and each of the times we come together. So a message that Sandal Farm would like to communicate to you is this. So I'm reading from the book that goes with the Oracle Cards of Amanda Ellis. And he reminds, he says to you as part of his offering, other than the overlighting of our gatherings with one another, see and feel the beauty that is all around you. Notice the good in your life and all that is in harmony. So often you concentrate only on what is wrong or needing to be changed. But you are asked to be open to the love and hope that is around you at all times. However you may feel and whatever you are going through. Come back to the simple pleasures of life, to music and song, to nature and light in all its myriad forms. Sunlight, starlight, sunrise, sunset, all the natural healing energies that are available to you. Each aspect sustains and nourishes you in every step. Certainly as we move, as we've been moving through this year, the calendar of 2023, the new moon, uh, each of the new moons as uh, there has been a circle formed through um, my offering uh, to invite people to gather together. And again, linear time, yes, some people come via the Zoom and any number of you join later uh, via the record, later in the sense of it's a linear thing, but know that we are all together regardless. And I want to share with you, I'm wondering if I could do it at the same time. This might be a bit of an experiment. So let me, uh, now I'm gonna go back to it. <laughs> Because I have over here some information I'd like to share with you about the solar eclipse. I'm sure I'll remember there's an image I want to share with you. Okay. This is a link I'm going to put in the details, the notes below this video. 
Um, and it is information about this solar eclipse offered by a wonderful wise woman whose name is Lynn Hayes about this particular rather, again, the, the new moons and the energies of this year have become, there's every month, there's another opportunity to uh, experience growth, transformation, a movement forward for this whole planet to more wholeness and healing. I know it's one of the reasons that I have been tapped by spirit to offer these. So we're making use Yet again, the Aries new moon of April continues this rather amazing opportunity. And Lynn Hayes tells us this. Let me go up here and make sure I have. So it's not something I don't think you'll see on screen, but you're certainly hearing me. Sometimes I, I surprise myself by what turns up on the screen <laughs> later on. It's the uh, about the eclipse uh, and that we have them in a pair. Okay, where are we here? Um, eclipses are often bunched into a series of two or three pairs, but this year, two of these eclipse pairs operate on their own without any others in the series. Now, some of this may sound like too much gobbledygook. Just listen for that, which really resonates with you. So here we have this new moon that's occurring at the end of Aries, almost the end, because tonight, literally after midnight, the sun sign, the sun moves from Aries into Taurus. So that's me aside telling you that part. It's the very last degree of Aries where we are right now and where this new moon uh, is coming to its, its fullness as a new moon. It's at the 29th degree called the critical or anoretic degree. The new moon at the ending of a sign offers a sweeping away of the old and a fresh new beginning, especially with the moon eclipsing the sun, stripping away any artifice of conscious awareness and bringing us face to face with the raw truth of our needs and desires as described by Aries. In this moment, which is rich with the power of Mars, Mars is the ruler of Aries, we can begin to let go as some of our willfulness as patterns are completed. The moon slips gently into Taurus just 20 minutes after the eclipse, in the depths of the night for us, forming an aspect to transformational Pluto. So that is some of Lynn Hay's information. And I want to go to one other wonderful wise woman. Uh, I won't be able to link uh, directly because it's a Facebook post and not everybody can see them, but I will put her name in the notes. Jasmine Grace Zahara is the person whose information I'm quoting to you now. Talking about where we are and what's coming around for us to take advantage of. She tells us about eclipses. Eclipses symbolize internal changes and discoveries about ourselves and others. We let go, make decisions, conclude things, and begin new cycles during an eclipse, which can have significance for us in the future, in the near future. Eclipses are an opportunity to go through a process of unveiling all that needs to be acknowledged, all that needs to be released. What else? And she has a wonderful long post here. If you're on Facebook and you'll see her name in the notes, you can look up more of this. Yes, 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 okay. This specific energy of the new moon and the eclipse will assist you with a smooth transition into a profound new beginning. More importantly, this new Aries moon eclipse, Aries new moon eclipse, signifies a new beginning that may be subtle at first, but the effects of it will last for several years ahead. All right, let me see if I can get back with you here. All right, very good. Now I do want to screen share an image. Spirit has been awfully wonderful about... Okay, here we are. 
Um, okay, where's my screen share? Here we go. Uh, bringing me things to share on the calls. Um, and I'm going to start with this one, checking my notes, see if I'm keeping up with where I hope to be and what I hope to share. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this afternoon, now, <laughs> um, the days that I offer these at Zoom, I try to have a quiet day, be open to more information, what it is. Let me, let me bring this up for you. Um, but anyway, and I was gone uh, celebrating the very end of my birthday week with a friend. And it, it was a rather a long drive for us to get together. Um, and so when I came back <laughs> around what for me was maybe four in the afternoon, and these are gatherings that begin at seven Eastern time. Um, and I was shown this and I knew particularly, I came across, it's on Facebook, this beautiful, beautiful uh, heart, it's called Heart to Heart, this beautiful uh, goddess with all, and if you look closely, and I'm making it any bigger, I think we'd lose a little bit of her, so do look closely at this beautiful image, and I knew it wanted, it came to my attention to be shared here, mentioned to you at the top of our time together, that the circle of us joining one with another is small in the sense of not just a few of us on Zoom tonight, but every one of you who joins via the recording, you simply step into the circle and our circle grows and grows in beautiful connection one with another. And what you're seeing here, this beautiful, I think of her certainly as like a moon. Oh, and I should tell you, I'll put it in the notes. It is the title, Heart to Heart, and the artist is Susan, or Suzanne Grace, I think it's Michelle. Susan Grace Michelle. I will be sure to accurately uh, attribute this in the um, notes. So all of the people, the humans gathered here, um, if you look closely, you see their hearts and they're linked one with another, one with another, one with another. And that's exactly what these circles of the moon that have been monthly through the last year and almost a year and a half, this continues. It's like a rippling effect, I often think of, um, moving out and circles that uh, just expand in, in energy and beauty and um, mystery, magic, and marvel. I, I, that's a phrase I often uh, fall back on. So we have um, this wonderful uh, image from this artist, Suzanne Grace Michelle. So we will keep it in front of us as we move into a time of quiet, uh, with one another and considering the questions that have been put before us through the other references that I shared with you. All right, so I'm going to pause for just a moment, let you absorb a little bit of what we've been hearing. The uh, calls that uh, are the Zoom gatherings. I offer to those who are uh, so uh, drawn to do so, find the opportunity to be a part of it. When the recording of the time together comes to an end, um, I um, offer an opportunity for people to simply share a little of what has come to mind or experience through the uh, the time together of the of the live or the recorded circle. So that will be true again for tonight. For those of you who join our circle through the recordings, it would be absolutely marvelous to hear a little of your uh, experiences um, by sharing them in the comment section that is um, attached to these YouTube videos and appreciate very much you doing so. Um, even though the new moons are time of the dark moon, is what I think is shown in this beautiful goddess image with all of the ones gathered. 
there is a powerful presence of the moon. And of course, it's even more so with this eclipsed moon, the solar eclipse that radiates out. And I'm going to bring that into our meditation time to uh, prompt you to be aware of the new moons. It's dark in the sense is that each month and the cycles of light and darkness that come through all of the natural cycles of the seasons, um, of the um, of our day and night, no matter where we are in the world, we all have the day, we all have the night. Um, but the moon, and of course, we, we know of her more through her bright cycle, and especially the full moon, which is pretty always lovely and spectacular. And I would be willing to bet any number of you, and I think maybe more for those of us female gendered, because we have, of course, some definite connection, very, his, very deeply elementally in our genetic makeup that responds to the moon. And it's the full moon, which I think gets all the kind of jazz, and it can keep us really up at night, not just the light, but the energy of it, because we just feel it. The new moon may be a little less, um, certainly we're not aware of it, but it is literally in the sky all day tomorrow, for those of us on the linear time of April 19th, April 20th, she is going to be waltzing through the sky all day, and I'm getting goosebumps saying this, with the grandfather's son. The eclipse moment has passed, but they are up there, and I know I'm using my hands, so I don't know what yours. No, you won't see it, because <laughs> I disappear off the screen when there's an image. But this is where we're going to go with our meditation, and to tune into that beautiful power and really every month, even if you're not a part of these calls, that you keep track of when the new moon is out and get yourself under the sky, under the sun, and let that moon bring herself into full connection with you. Okay, well, let's see. Before we move in, and what I have done, and again, I'm filling in for those who are new to this, whether it be this uh, arrival tonight on April 19th for Zoom, or seeing this video um, in um, whenever it is, it comes to your awareness and the desire on your part to tune in and be a part of it. So, um, and I think I had another thought that wanted to come through, but like a lot of my thoughts, it went skittering off some other place. Let me let me pause for a moment and see where that might lead us. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, some of you who watch this video or are tuned in now may have seen, as I mentioned earlier, the new video series on the earth elements uh, and the one on water done for World Water Day. And I was so excited that at the end of what would be a meditation part that I would bring this beautiful chime, the Koshi chime, uh, to signal the end of the meditation time. Uh, in physical minutes, it's between six and 10. And it turned out the microphone did not pick the sound up whatsoever. So here I am with this beautiful Koshi chime. I'll show it to you. It's wonderful. It's attuned to the energies of water. Whoops. She's sitting under my Isis person. And Isis needs a repair job. I'm looking over at her. Whoops. Oh, you are really hooked onto something here. Anyway. There we go. So this is the Koshi chime, and I be so I, I never heard it at all, but that's what I attempted to use. So it all comes to the point to say that when we begin our quiet time together, thank you, Koshi chime, um, and we come to the end of it, I will quietly prompt a return to um, your presence and awareness in a conscious way. And uh, that will be the conclusion in, uh, of the time we have with one another. So anyway, a great thanks to all of you for eating whatever that beckoned to you to be um, come a part of this circle. The And again, when this image came to me, let me get my pointy thing down there. Sometimes I go later and watch and I think, oh, there it is kind of hanging up there in this, the end of this edge of the screen. We are 
so powerfully connected to these cycles. All that has taken place in the civilized development of our world, and heaven knows it's been a mashup in places, and Mother Earth has suffered greatly at the hands of a lot of this. Um, but there is underneath, within our deep selves, in our deep past, whether in, in our ancestral connections, the desire to make the reconnection with this life-giving connection with the earth. Um, it is certainly probably the biggest motivation I have had to offer these. I personally and privately as an um, individual um, have been a part of nature connection, eco-spirituality for really almost all of my life, beginning all the way back in the first Earth Day I was in college, all of that. But there is a hunger to know more of what these connections are, to bring about a reconnection of ourselves with the earth. That's so much of what is here. And the moon, the sun, all of that, this beautiful weaving together of the living universe. How blessed are we to be alive in this time wherever it is you might be in the world, a place with hopefully ready access to a place of nature and connection. If you go back to the other videos in this series of this year, discussion of learning more about your roots, not just ancestral, but the energetic roots you have with the earth. So that is where we will bring the preliminaries, so to speak, and move to a time of reflection and quiet and at the end after that we will uh, offer our thanks to one another and conclude this circle in connection for this month all right i want to bring up a bit of a way to keep myself a little bit on track okay time wise all right okay so me and all of you regardless of time and place, I invite you now to close your eyes, to make yourself more comfortable on the chair or the couch or whatever it is that you are seated upon. Let your shoulders relax. We'll do a bit of what we're doing before we find the quiet is we are centering and grounding. Centering and grounding. We'll, we'll use our breath to help us. This is what I like to offer. So again, be as comfortably seated as you can. Let your shoulders drop. And let out a breath. Just release. Just give it a little letting things out. Breathe in through your nose and breathe now down deeper than what had been true of a few minutes ago. Breathe in more deeply through your nose, down into your heart and belly. And then release through your, through your mouth, blowing out distractions, anything that followed you into this time together. It doesn't need to be anywhere near you now. Let's do one more in-breath, then a cleansing out-breath. Breathe into your belly, through your nose. Let your belly expand. And breathe out. And now some gentle breaths in that manner. Just on your own, but again, easy and let the pace of it slow down. You're going to be in just lovely cleansing breaths, gentle breaths. You know how this incoming air is nourishing you, your heart faithfully beating each and every moment of your life, sleeping, waking, always. Now breathe into your heart center. Just come into your heart's 
center. Let your attention drop to your heart. You can imagine or think more of the breathing if you care to, but make it easy and gentle and breathe into your heart. There is a fire in your heart of spirit. Think of it as the place where your spirit resides. It certainly is true. The spark of your life, your spirit self. And tune in to the beautiful, vibrant energy. You might see it. You certainly will feel it. And celebrate this vital spark of life in the center of your heart. Our heart has a bigger mindfulness and capacity of thought than even the brain that sits above your heart in your head. So we're going to work with our heart's attention, with its intelligence, and celebrate and see if you can expand with the next breath, the vibrant energy and beauty of your heart's fire. Now let your awareness gently drop down through the energy centers called your chakras, down below your heart, connecting now through your hips, just let the energy just slide down, drop down through your legs to your feet, the soles of your feet, an energetic connection now and feel below you how it is that the earth, it might be very close. It might be only feet away from the floor, the chair, the floor of your home, the place where you're sitting. It might be several stories below if you're in an apartment. You might be fortunate hearing this by even sitting outside, hearing it in some podcast way. But feel how the energy now seeks to drop and allow it to drop through what we call the Earth Star Chakra, there's a connecting point to Mother Earth, about a foot below our feet, our soles of our feet. Let the energy sink down, just drop down straight into beautiful Mother Earth, directly below wherever it is you are at this very moment. Feel how that energy from your heart is connecting now with the Earth below you. And letting it now in your imaginal sense, your beautiful awareness, know that Mother Earth is welcoming this energetic connection of your heart's energy to her beautiful place within her wonderful self to which you are connected. We have a point. It may be deep within the Earth as you let it continue to go down, but it is an energetic point of connection to which you as an individual soul and spirit are connected. Think of it as your energetic roots. She, Mother Earth, beautiful Gaia, welcomes this energetic liveliness. Feel how she embraces, offers her embrace to you. And let that energy pulse between you. Letting it rise back up, her lovely embrace and her gratitude for your awareness of this energetic connection. Let it rise up once more to your heart. See in your mind's eye these beautiful connections we share with one another in this circle, drawn together to celebrate and honor the new moon, grandmother moon. Feel how this energetic connection we have individually to Mother Earth is now shared amongst us, heart to heart to heart. Earth heart to your heart, your heart to one, to another, all around this beautiful circle. We celebrate and give thanks to be so vibrantly and marvelously connected one with another. Now bring your awareness back to your own heart space. Continue if you can to feel this beautiful, just zingy energy between you and newly activated energy with Mother Earth. 
And now let that energy source that pulse within your heart rise up through your, your throat chakra, your third eye. Don't even worry if this is things you don't necessarily think of too often, but let the energy rise up through the column that is your energetic connection to the top of your head and let the energy rise up like a fountain of beautiful energy all the way from Mother Earth to your heart, through your upper energy centers out of the top of your head and let that energy flow out like a fountain as it is of love and light. In the circle where we are generating even more of this, share this energy now with any place on the planet where you know, or even ask for it to go to places where it is most needed. Sharing our energetic powerhouse, which we are building, you might say, by coming together in this circle. Come back to center of your heart. And what I'm offering now is a bit of a guided meditation to follow for this time together. And then for any of you who bring this message and energy into tomorrow or the next day or two, when Grandmother Moon still is in this newness, this, this uh, powerful coming together of her energies with Grandfather Son. So if you will, picture yourself in a place in nature that you know and love well, or simply a beautiful spot, wherever that might be. Let your imagination create it for you. It might be, well, wherever it is, just take a moment, tune into a place in nature where you can take yourself in your imaginal body. It is a new day. It is a day of the new moon's energy and you are there beneath the sky. The sun will of course be radiating grandfather energy, grandfather's sun radiating his energy. And with him is traveling grandmother moon. Allow yourself to be so very aware of the presence of the combined solar and lunar energies. And it is there where I invite you to take some quiet minutes now to connect with this energy and ask for whatever guidance or message or simply um, an infusion of your heart, your spirit, with the energy of this beautiful Aries new moon. What needs, what is an ending for you? What is concluding? What is asking to be birthed? What of this new moon's time is being offered to you of transformative, empowering energies. And so now we'll take ourselves into the quiet of our own hearts, our place, the beautiful earth where we have found ourselves, nature, and simply be deep within this beautiful place and time, still with one and another. And in a few minutes, I will call us back into circle.
And the next breath. Begin to, that we're going to draw this circle soon to a close, but at this moment, wherever it is, give thanks to those presences that joined you in the various ways that they have made themselves known to you, whether it be an angelic presence, whether it be the beauty of the sun and the moon, thanking all that have made themselves available to you and will continue to do so in the day, the days to come. In your next breath now, breathing in, be aware once again of where it is you are sitting. Aware now more clearly of your surroundings. But before you completely release all of that, Feel once again the circle of individuals who have come together in this new moon celebration, awareness, and honoring. What came to me in our time together, a message to share to you that what we are doing with one another is we are remembering ancient wisdoms that wish once more to be birthed anew, to be rebirth as benefits all of us, as benefits our beautiful planet, Mother Earth, and all our relations in all of the realms. So I thank you all for joining us whenever it is that has occurred and being a part of this vibrant circle, relearning renewing, remembering ancient wisdoms coming to be once more a vital part of our time together. It has been my pleasure to host this gathering and once again, thanking everyone who has been encouraging in part and simply celebrating these beautiful aspects of our wonderful planet and the living universe in which we are with one another. So with that, I bid you a good night on the recording, looking forward to whatever connection communication you wish to offer. But many blessings until next month's new moon. From Light Spring Glen in my corner of the world, many blessings and much love.